Hey guys, Kevin Muldoon here. What I've got here is a USB meter or USB multimeter. It's been marketed as a USB safety tester in this one. This is quite a cheap accessory to buy, but it's something that's incredibly useful. This particular one is sold to me as the M dot weight USB multimeter, but it's more commonly known as the Mucker G7. That's M-U-K-E-R. Now, nothing else to it. Made in China, as you can see, and that's the company name that was branded as the M Way. But as I said, most people who have this model have it as the Mucker J7. And if you can see on the back here, the information here it says product name. Get in focus. There we go. USB safety tester product mode J7-T. So that's the particular model I've got. The voltage current range is 3 volts to 30 volts and 0 to 5.1 amps. Uh, function the USB current voltage capacity security tester. And support Q. Let me see here. QC 2.0 compatible. QC 3.0. BC1 to Apple voltage range. I don't know what that means. It's also got green star 5 ratings and temperature 10 degrees to 60 degrees. Now it does say on the, the website, on Amazon, sorry, the product listing, it says that it can show you current voltage, energy, resistance, capacity and power. So I'll quickly put it on and I'll show you what it does. As you can see, it comes with a Chinese triangle. That's always good. And it's got a USB extender and it's got the actual test itself. This is actually quite a useful accessory to have because, you know, for example, my Surface Pro 4 laptop, it's got one USB port and when I put a thick case on it, I couldn't put on flash drives like this. You know, I couldn't put it in the side because the case was so thick. So what I can do is instead plug that in there and then plug my device into this USB port. It's, it's just a USB extender. It's very useful though. So, I'll just do it directly, cut that out. This is what you're going to see. Now, the first thing to notice is that it's in Chinese. Now, if you're watching this, I doubt that you speak Chinese. You probably speak English, but thankfully, this device is available in English and Chinese. All you have to do is push this little key to the top. There's a little button here. Just push it six times very quickly. And it changes to English. So now this is going to be in English all the time. Now, the reason this is switching off is because it's not actually being used just now. If I put on my phone, it's going to switch on. Here we go. It's saying welcome. It's, we now have English. And I'll just quickly go through the three different screens. So... This one shows you voltage, capacity, energy, time, and it's got current at the top as well. In fact, it's got temperature there as well. This one is my favorite screen because it shows you volts, it shows you current, and then it's got time, wattage, amps per hour, and watts per hour. And then on this one, you've got volts, um, resistance, and voltage, and a few other different things. A lot of the information is overlapping. Now, Unfortunately, you so noticed here that it didn't come with instructions, but I'll link to this. There's a few articles that explain how it works. I've showed you how to change the language from English to, uh, from Chinese to English and vice versa. Pushing this button once changes between one of these three screens. Two clicks resets the amps per hour counter. Three clicks resets the watts per hour counter. Four clicks resets the time. And five clicks changes when the power is turned off. Now, to explain that a little bit better, you can see the time here is now set at eight minutes 16. That's because I've been using it before. So what I should do is click it four times and it's reset to zero. And now it is just ticking over again. Now it's in seconds, minutes and hours here. And that's, we'll be able to show you up to like 24 hours of usage. And that can show you how long you've been using this safety tester or this USB meter to monitor your device. The setup is pretty simple. All this does is act as um, 
act as a middleman, I suppose. You know, it's placed in the middle of your power and your device. That's it, you've got your power and then your device. Now, as far as power goes, your power could be a power bank or it could be a USB adapter. Then you've got your, their USB meter and then you've got the device you're powering. So that could be your tablet, your iPad, your smartphone, your MP3 player, your USB speakers, anything like that. Now, it's now showing that it's been on for 52 seconds. Pushing this five times, the little button five times. Now, that it currently the time is set to off, but if I push it five times, I can change it to auto, so that it automatically switches off, or I can change it to hours. And if I set it to hours, then what will happen is I can set it between 24 and one hour, like on one hour increments. And that will allow me, for example, I'll show you just now, one, two, three, four, five, now it's got off, push it again, it says auto, push it again, I've got time, and now it says 24 hours. And it's gone down, so I've now got it set at 16 hours. So basically what, what this means is, this would power this device for up to 16 hours, and then it would switch off, and then it would track all the information, that, you know, the capacity, the voltage, the amps, everything that was used. I've just got it that it doesn't turn off. Now, it's quite easy to use, actually, once you, you know how to use it. I was a little bit alarmed when I first got it because there was no instructions and it was all in Chinese, so I was a little bit, you know, it's like, oh no, what am I going to do? It really wasn't clear at first what you had to do. But once you figure it out, it's very easy. Now, it shows you a lot of information there, like resistance and temperature and things like that. If you're into, you know, electronics, if you're testing things like Raspberry Pis, I'm sure you're going to find that kind of information very useful. That is not what I'm going to use this for. Primarily, I'm going to be using this for three different things. Firstly, is to test power banks. Secondly, is to test USB cables. And thirdly, it would be to test um, USB adapters, plugs. So I'll quickly just explain what I mean by that. With power banks, you it can tell you the capacity of the device. So that's really useful, and it can also tell you how much current is being sent. So, for example, this RAV power, it's got 16,000 amps. Take that out. It's got 16,000 amps, and it's got two ports. One says 2.4 amps, and the other one says 2.1 amps. I'm not getting that in focus, but it does say that. Now, RAV power are a good company. I'm sure that all that information is correct. But there's a lot of cheap power banks out there. Sometimes they're giving out its free gifts. And, you know, if you want to test the capacitor, you want to test the amps, then you could do that using this USB tester. Another thing to note is that over time, the power of power banks are going to go down. You know, it's, if you, especially if you're using it all the time. Lithium-ion batteries, you know, the, the capacity decreases over time. So if you've been using, like, you know, your, your power bank every single day, Say you've got a little portable power bank, you're using it every single day of the week for a year or so, and you've noticed that you're not getting the charge that you're used to, what you can do is plug in the USB safety tester and you can test the capacity and you can test you know, what the current capacity is. So it's not something I'll be testing all the time, but it is useful to have. The other thing is to test the volts and the amps that are coming from your USB adapters. Now, a lot of adapters will tell you what's there, like this one for example is from Lenovo and it's for a tablet that I bought and it says that the, out, the output is 5 volts or 1.5 amps. Now this can do 1.5 amps but this phone can handle 2.4 and this um, power bank can send 2.4 so this is actually quicker at charging my phone than this plug. So that is something to bear in mind. Now this one thankfully it tells you what the amps are and what the volts are. You'll find a lot of plugs don't. The ones that I have here actually generally do. They tell the information on the back. But you'll find a lot of plugs that you have don't actually tell you what the amps are. And you also find that the amps and the voltage that they tell you that they do, you know, they do send, it's not exactly true. So you can use this USB tester to test whether a USB plug is actually sending the power that it's, it's claiming to, to be sending to your device. Now this doesn't sound like this is a big thing or you know, perhaps it's only geeks like myself that should be actually using these things. But everyone has got a smartphone, everyone's got a tablet, well most people have got a tablet. 
Most people are now buying power banks as well because they're watching videos on the phones all day and yet they don't know, you know, if the power coming from it is what the, the company is actually claiming it to be. Now, as well as testing power banks and as well as testing adapters, you also want to be testing plugs. Uh, maybe getting that right. You also want to be testing cables. So, I've got so many cables in the house and the problem is you never know what the good ones are and what the bad ones are. Unless, you know, if a, even if a cable works, you don't know whether it's a good one or not, you know. If a cable doesn't work, you'll see that, you know, the charge signal won't be there and you'll throw it out, you go, right, that doesn't work. But a lot of the time, the, the, the cable will work, but the problem is there's just not enough power get, getting from your adapter or your power bank to the device and it's all down to this USB cable. Now, this one, for example, this just looks like a boring rubbishy kind of generic USB cable but this is actually the one that came with my Google Nexus 6P and this is a good cable but I can't tell the difference between that and a generic one that's came from China so what you can do is test your devices for that now I'll just show you an example of that all you have to do then in a situation like that is you plug in your USB cable like so And then information would come up and tell you whether the, the voltage or the amperage, etc., is working. Now, there's other things to be taken into consideration. Obviously, the, the device that you're powering will limit what the um, what power is being received. So what you really need to do is test a few cables with each device to make sure you get the, the correct figure. So I'll give you an example of that. I'm using that um, USB, USB type C, but I can also use a micro B connector with a type C connector put on the top. So what I can do now, take that out, put this one in. One of the reasons this is getting 1.3 amps is because you know the battery gets charged quickly at the start and then it slows down. It, that prolongs the battery life. So I'm getting 1.3 amps as well. So I'm getting the same power coming from this micro B with the, the connector on as they are with this official cable. But it is something to bear in mind because some devices will actually surprise you. I've tasted this cable a few times, for example. This is for my JBL Bluetooth speakers. And I just assumed that speakers would be quite powerful. You know, you'd be sending 2.4 amps or 2 amps or something like that. But that is not the case. You see, this one only takes 0.4 amps when it's charging. Now, there's nothing wrong with slow charging devices in that respect because a lot of the time battery life is improved when things are charged more slowly. And it's only really tablets and you know smartphones that they're really trying to push faster charging. But this is, I must admit, a fantastic little device. I really, I'm really happy with this and this one seems pretty good. What I will say though is I haven't tested other USB multimeters yet. And there's some good reviews out there from other um, bloggers, etc., who have reviewed different devices and showed you which ones are the most accurate. Apparently, Drock has got quite uh, quite a lot of positive reviews, but they're not cheap. You know, they're like say 18 pounds for one of the versions that's there instead of the one that I bought here, which was eight pounds. So you have to pay double, and to be honest, it really depends on what information you want. It was only a few things I wanted. I like the idea of the time, the capacity and the voltage and the current. I'm not really caring about resistance and temperature and things like that. So my advice is to find the one that has all the information that you need and then find the cheapest version of it. You know, if you find that there's a lot of them with the same, it's the same device but just different logos or branding on it, buy the cheapest one. What I will say is, even if you're not geeky, even if you're not a big tech person, I think a lot of people will find these useful. You know, it's going to help you test cables, power banks, USB plugs, and it will tell you exactly what's working and what's not. So if you get any questions about any of this, please do leave a comment below. Do not prof profess to be an expert on this issue, but I'm sure I'll be able to point you in the right direction because I have read a few articles on it. I'll share the, um, some of the articles that I looked at about reviews etc and I'll 
include it. For example, this one gave a, a few, a, a few, gave a full description and kind of review of this one that I'm looking at just now. So it, it helped point me in the right direction as far as what the clicks did, etc., etc. Because the um, they also tested it there as well. Yeah, because there's there's not too many um, manuals out there for these things, so you really kind of have to rev rely on the Amazon reviews or things like this where people have really tested it. Now, again, this version that I've got is the Mooker J7-T, and mine was marketed as the m -Way. I'm quite happy with this one, and I'll be using it in future reviews to test you know, any power banks or USB plugs, etc. Thanks for watching, guys, and again, if you have any questions, please do ask below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And apologies for my speaking, but I've had no sleep. I'm just back from a stag do, so I'm absolutely shattered, and um, I think I need to get to my bed early tonight. But I hope you found this useful, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, take care.